Towards the end of 2024, I went out to 12 volt power and did a couple of videos with them. And we wrapped up the talk about this Comet CHA250 antenna. This antenna has existed in the amateur radio community for a very long time. And depending on who you talk to, you'll hear all kinds of different thoughts about it. And many times people say, don't get it. It's a dummy load. It's not worth your money. Now, to be frank, Comet doesn't hold anything back from this. They admit it's a compromised antenna, and the folks at 12-volt power said the same thing. And they gave me one, and they said, why don't you go check it out, try it out, become brutally honest, totally honest, and tell us what your thoughts are. And so here's this video. But let's let's learn a little bit more about this, because I, I think you're going to find this uh, this kind of interesting. This is a 80-meter through 57 megahertz, so basically it gets you around to 6 meters no radial needed vertical antenna. So it's it's almost like an end fed that's aligned vertically using the pipes that it has. Now, if you go to the Comet website, it's it's pretty interesting. So about $430, you can expect to see it. And yeah, this is this is what it looks like. It's that big honking boy there is taking up a lot of that RF energy. And they say that these antennas make the most of a tight situation when you have too little space or too much regulation. These antennas offer easy assembly and setup, which is true. I did set it up. It's very easy. No ground radials, no tuning or adjustments, which, by the way, if you hear any antenna manufacturers say that, it's it's likely going to be more of a, a resistive antenna or a capacitive antenna. It's It's not going to be putting out a lot of the RF. You're going to be creating some heat, right? So your RF is going to get dissipated as heat instead of going out actually out to the antenna. So it's extremely compromised is basically what they're saying here. Uh, SWR is 1.6 to 1 from 3.5 to 57 megahertz. So a, a flat SWR across the board is more reminiscent of a dummy load, right? And a dummy load, uh, you, you can't actually have it next to a radio and it, it does transmit RF, but it's, it's not an antenna, right? It's more of a resistive load. Now, the, the last part here, their wide bandwidth is not only good on ham bands, but on shortwave bands as well, making these antennas perfect for an SWL shortwave listener wanting a low profile all-in-one antenna. Now, I will, I will say this right up front. As far as setup goes, it's an incredibly easy antenna to set up. There is no radials. I literally have it all on the side of my house. It stood up through the massive windstorm that we got that caused the Palisades fire. Not a problem. It's been totally solid, and I expect it to be. This is kind of advertised as like an HOA vertical antenna, and it does work, but it's it's not very effective. There are likely other options that you have available. But let, let's continue reading. The Comet website looks like it changed. I, I think it did anyway. Am I, let me see. Am I missing anything? No. Uh, they used to have a different different section under the description. Yeah, it looks like it's still on the DX engineering website, though. So we'll, we'll read that. This improved CHA250. Oh, this is the HD model. My apologies. Features a, uh, a new solid whip replacement for the top aluminum section for greater flexibility and less strain. Now, they call it out. They say the magic behind the CHA250 is the transformer matching section, of course, right? That's what's, that's what's soaking up the RF. The transformer on the original had smooth sides. The improved design features a heat sink to dissipate the heat created inside the transformer from the RF that enters the power feeding section rather than transmitted as RF. So they're just saying that right up front. This is the compromise needed to create a broadband, low SDR, multiband HF antenna with minimal visual impact. Now, I'm going to throw it over to a video that we shot with 12 volt, and then we're going to go take a look on it on my radio. And we're actually going to do an AB comparison against a much better antenna. So we're likely going to have to do a follow on when we're actually in the field to something that's a little bit closer in capability. Kevin, you were telling me about the CHA250 HD. Thanks for having me out again to 12 volt power. This is a. 80 through six meters? Six meters, six yeah. Meter, uh, vertical antenna. So give people a little background on what this is and kind of who is it for. Right, okay, so this antenna was designed seven, eight, nine years ago. We've had some revisions to it, strength in some certain areas, but it's designed for people that need some performance, but yet don't have don't have the room or HOA. A lot of restrictions in HOAs. Okay. You know, I'm out from California like you are, and a lot of homeowner associations, you know, they'll let you do temporary installations or kind of hide installation. So the idea with this antenna is, I'll go through it real quick with you. Mm -hmm. It is a 20, it's tw I'll start at the bottom here. It's 23 feet, doesn't have much of a wind load. Uh, okay. You basically put a stake in the ground, you clamp it on, and it's good to go. Uh, it's lightweight, uh, there's no tuner required. Any length of coax you want to put on it, that's okay. fine. You need 50, 100 feet, RG8X or better. 
Uh, we call it HOA friendly because it's just a pull. No ground radials of any kind at all are required on this. And like I say, continuous coverage from 3.5 to just above six meters. And uh, once again, it has the bottom of it has basically a matching transformer right here with a PL259. It comes with the clamps. You just put a stake in the ground and just mount it and that's it. And it goes up 23 feet. And then the top has a little whip. No tuning at all is required on this. So yeah. Now, I think when you have an A-B comparison like we're going to do right now, it's one of the best ways when you're on your ground location to do a comparison between antennas. Now, the reality is I know that the antennas we're comparing here are apples to oranges. I'm taking a admittedly compromised antenna in the, the CHA250, and I'm comparing it to my three-element step IR. With a in the clear, QSL. And this is the Stillwater Amateur Radio Association in Minnesota. Let's see if we make contact. Oh, you're up and down, up and down into Utah. He's S5. I got you in the log. Be sure to look us up on QRZM.com. He's in Utah. This is Whiskey Zero, Julia Hotel, QRZM. Kilo, India 6, November, Alpha, Zulu. Oh, India 4, Zulu, Radio Hotel, 5, 7 into Minnesota, QSL. Well, 62 degrees, I'm jealous. We're 20 degrees here with a little bit of wind that makes it feel a lot colder than that. Well, we will try. This is Ice Station Whiskey Zero Julian Hotel, QRZM. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Back 4, Sierra Tango Juliet. I bet you 5 9 in the middle soda, QSM. So, this could be frustrating if you were using this antenna and you're, well, you're hearing. You be sure to look at the QRZM.com, Whiskey Zero Juliet Hotel, where you'll find out about our special event and how you can get yourself a special certificate suitable for framing. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. November question mark. Zulu, 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 have you a 5656 five, into Cerritos, California, QSL? Okay, was that Kilo India 6, November, Zulu, Zulu? Uh, negative, negative. November Alpha Zulu, November Alpha Zulu, QSL? November Alpha Zulu, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I've got you about a 5-3 into Minnesota today, QSL? Uh, copy that, copy that. You're a 5-5 five, five here into Southern California. Thank you. 7-3. Thanks for Southern California. Okay, Thanks for so we got 7 that. 7-3. Soda? Maui. Thank you for the 5-6, Frank. You're 57, 57 in Ohio. Ohio. Okay, thank you, sir. And I might as well work the portable here. Uh, Kilo 7 Delta India Papa first. Uh, KC8 Mike Mike. Everybody listening, if you if you like to uh, if you like to rag chew and hang out with your buddies, 15 is a good band during the day. Check that out. Get a lot more space to play with than 20 meters, which we're gonna hop on right now. We are on the comet right now. Let's see right here. Yeah. No. Yeah, not going to play any stretch, but uh, Good signal. one of the things he told me, which I've never heard, step is, you know, everybody thinks that course there is such a wonderful place, you know, with the gold wings, the swept wings. <clears throat> he told me he, he watched over a dozen of his buddies snap roll into the deck of a carrier and die because of that horrible design. And, um, oh my God. you know, and it was kind of a shocker. Didn't expect that. And uh, anyway, and he had to do bombing runs over over Korea, and it just it was distasteful. I, said, I, I certainly would have to change my pants afterwards, and maybe he did, just didn't admit it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's something I really wanted to do. Game seven, I should. Kilo, India 6, November, Alpha, Zulu. All right, there's a couple of guys. Come to Kilo, India 6, something Alpha, Zulu. Kilo, India 6, November, Alpha, Zulu. November, Alpha, Zulu. QSL? QSL, QSL, you're 5-5 in California. Kilo, India 6, 
the Rumble Hall of Fame game. 55 and uh, yeah, 55, 6, 6, 6. Uh, copy, copy. You're an S65656 into Cerritos, California. Kios out. Copy to 560, California. Thank you for hunting. Thank you, much. Thank you very much. 73. Um, so we suggest we should come up, and they were so happy. They wanted us to come back and work with this 10 year program. So it's a lot of fun for us, and we learn a lot about the astronomy and get to meet some of the astronomers. And, and this is the talk step down, IR. Here over. is the. Nice Where'd he go? Come back. Ooh, kind of noisy. All right, Joe. Well, thank you so much. Before you go, you have so to he was tell a me about 10 over S9. Um, now he's at S8. Well, thank you. Man, it's working. We're so happy. Uh, Scott, um, I think we're curious what type of amplifier you're using there. Uh, I'm using the Mercury Lux. Actually, two amplifiers at once have an intermediate amp, a hard rock 50, that you have to assemble and solder and exactly. pull your hair out. <laughs> anyway, the good news, hard rock 50, when you buy the kit that's for them, step uh, if you can't figure it out, you can send it back and they finish it for you. So that's kind of nice. Um, <laughs> if you break it, you can send the amp back to that picture. That's nice. That is actually uh, nice. I, like I want to put it back to you there, Scott and Laramie. Uh, what's your amplifier? AK7VY AJ6XW. About to wrap things up, but boy howdy, uh, 10 meters looks like it just opened up a bit. And we picked up new interesting interference. I don't know if this, these new bars are coming from. Oh yeah, that that's pretty cool that you had to learn Morse code there too. I'm in the S9. middle of the class and I'm hoping it'll go well so I can hang out with my father Still out on his copy. equipment. He has a ICOM IC7600. I don't know what this uh, radio... Is there any other stations that are listening to us? Down, um, uh, and Back on uh, step just wanted to scan and, and log in a few uh, contacts for today. Uh, I'm slowly getting my father and my mother into it. I haven't gotten... I managed to get a GMRF for my family, for my wife and kids. And um, they uh, love it. They love the GMRS, but it's hard for them. You know, they can't just talk on the ham radio. So that's why I got them a GMRS, um, FRS radio, so they can play around on it. So I can play on the big radio, I guess. Well, that's awesome, John, that you got those little radios for him to get involved in the You got their dad the in the background it's saying, have a conversation. I can cool. hear I appreciate your contact today. He's there, but I got to keep switching to get to the other antenna. So this is what happens. Um, cold, uh, way better than we can. Can't pick we're, up we're on the uh, when it on comes the to cold weather is for Louisiana. But we do like it, though. We do like it, but um, it's about time for it to go away and the summertime come up. Note that and, band uh, that's sliding by me right now. Hot. That's the the signals that the that the comet's getting. So there is there is some some difference there for sure. Thank you for the nice contact this weekend, John. Enjoy the rest of it. Kilo Juliet 5, Foxtrot November Victor. This was Victor Echo 5, Charlie Delta Oscar. They got a good station. They're picking them up in, uh, down Roger here. Roger that. Uh, I hear you loud and clear. You're coming in even clearer as we're talking. 73. Let's poke around a little bit. It's going to call CQ. And that's the one you're running. Uh, I am running actually here uh, a, uh, a Tenodyne, a TA Tenodyne antenna, a log periodic at 50 feet when you're away, 100 feet to the actual Ooh. antenna. That's Start a ways difference. out, but uh, I'm not getting too much loss, I think, in the long run. And a little I'm going to double-check my gain because that that's lot, pretty low. Yeah, it's high. But the, wow, uh, you must be in the high, high, Whoa. Area, the high, the high altitude to get some snow, which of course obviously is nice. There for a little while. Uh, she was in you can see the slices are different, right? The, the intensity of the signals. She had a lot of interesting stories from that neck of the woods, but she's back here now on the east coast. Uh, yeah. 
Well, good to hear you in there. Uh, now, I'll leave it with this. When you're forced to play within the antenna space restrictions of your QTH, the Comet antenna can provide a clear winning advantage to getting out and making QSOs. They're not holding anything back here. This is a very compromised antenna. It is dissipating a lot of your RF energy as heat. There are other options that exist in the antenna space for someone that lives in an HOA. You can put up resonant antennas in an HOA. You might have a more difficult time with it. I appreciate that, but it's totally doable, right? So I appreciate 12 volt power and, and Comet for letting me make this video because I think they knew that it, it, it's probably not going to be me singing a, a ton of praises about this antenna. But I think uh, they're being completely honest, and I think that there are probably some people who this could be an option. And so it is an incredibly easy antenna to set up. I can, I believe that it works as intended, right? Uh, I was able to make some contacts on it. I've worked some POTAs, chased a couple of people on 10 meters, uh, a number of other people. 40 meters, I actually could hear myself on it during a live stream on K6 EGGs on his late night live stream on 40. I was able to hear myself on the Salt Lake uh, listening, uh, shortwave listening station, the Kiwi SDR. So that was kind of interesting that I was able to at least get to Salt Lake uh, in Utah from California. Now, it's kind of interesting also about this antenna is it, it actually has pretty good reviews. So there are four reviews, which isn't a lot, and maybe that's because they upgraded to the HD, but it's rocking like a 4.5 star average. So most of the people it looks like are those that are looking for easy installation and a very low profile look. And I'll drop this link in the video description so you guys can check it out. But a lot of them are commenting on fast assembly, lightweight, performs better than expected. So at least they know not to not to hold it in that high of a regard. But So I'll leave that to you to decide on. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this antenna, particularly if you had one, had one for a while, what your thoughts are. And post them below in the comments. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks for watching. 73.